This month we're going to explore two of my favorite quadratic strategies. I'm going to warm up with this problem right here now. now. Don't be afraid of the extra variables. This is still just a quadratic. You got an x squared, you got an x. And well, we're told this quadratic has real roots 4 and negative 6. So we already know the factored form of this quadratic. It's just x minus 4 times x plus 6. Because we put 4 in here, we'll get 0. You put negative 6 in here, we'll get 0. So there's our quadratic. And well, we just need it in this form. So we're just going to multiply this out. I'm going to break out the distributive property. Yeah, I know. You do this a little bit faster than I do, but I like to go ahead and think about the distributive property here, make sure I don't make any mistakes. We get x squared, x times 6 gives us 6x, minus 4 times x minus 4x. Minus 4 times 6 gives us a minus 24, and then we just group the like terms in the middle. And you probably went straight from here to here, and that's okay. So now, this is our quadratic. We look back up here, and we see that b is 2, and c is negative 24. We're just lining up the coefficients. That's what we do when we have this quadratic is the same as that quadratic. We just line up the coefficients. So b is 2, c is negative 24. We add those two together to get b plus c is negative 22. Wait a second. Negative 24. 4 times negative 6 is negative 24. <sighs> coincidence. I'm sure it's just a coincidence. But well, what happens if we add them? 4 plus negative 6. 4 plus negative 6 is negative 2. It's the opposite of that. Eh, probably just a coincidence. Let's go on to the next problem. All right, here we go. Once again, we have some extra variables. We're not afraid of extra variables. All right, this is just a quadratic. Again, we have an x squared. We have x. We have the factored form right over there. In fact, this looks a lot like the previous problem. I have a factored form. Here it is in not factored form, an expanded form. So we'll just take this, multiply it out, compare it to that. We'll see what happens. x minus 8 times x minus k. And yeah, I'm going to do it the old man long way. I'm going to use the distributive property, x times x minus k minus 8 times x minus k. And we multiply this out. Sure enough, x times x, that gives us our x squared. And minus kx minus 8 times x minus 8x. Minus 8 times minus k gives us a plus 8k. And now we're told that this quadratic is the same as that one for all values of x. Well, I know one particularly convenient one to choose, and that is 0. If we put in 0, well, all these terms will go away, and these will go away. So that tells us that m is the same thing as 8k, which is pretty much what we expected. Last terms to be the same. The x squareds are obviously the same, and we'll need just the x terms. We'll need these to be the same as that for every single value of x. Well, that's only going to happen when the coefficients line up, when the minus k minus 8 equals the minus 5k. So we have minus 5k has to equal minus k minus 8. All right, so I'll just add the k to both sides. I'll have minus 4k equals minus 8, which of course tells us k is 2. Once we have k is 2, we go ahead and drop it in there. 8 times 2 is 16. That gives us m. We have the answer to the problem. But you know what? I'm going to check this. I feel a little nervous here. I'm going to go ahead and check this. I'm going to multiply x minus 8 times x minus 2. Okay, I'll do it your way. x times x is x squared. We get a minus 8x there, minus 2x there. Put those together. We have a minus 10x. And then we have minus 8 times minus 2. That gives us a plus 16. All right, check this. We put the 2 up there. It gives us a minus 10x, just like we expected. And we started to end with 16 already. Take a look at this. The roots over here are 8 and 2. 8 times 2 is 16. 8 plus 2, well, that's 10, which is the opposite of the negative 10. It's kind of the same thing that was going on over here. We multiply the roots, we get that. We add the roots, we get the opposite of that. 
It happened twice in a row. Maybe it's a coincidence. All right, you can't just trust this always works because well, maybe it doesn't always work. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to think about this on your own. Try to work this out. Try to try to solve. Try to figure out what's going on here. And then you should go over and check out the activity sheet. That's right. Math Counts makes these activity sheets. They put them up on their site to go with these videos where we're going to explore this a whole lot more and discover yet another one of my favorite quadratic problem solving techniques. But before you do that, I want you to check out my last two problems. Once again, you know the drill. We have extra variables. Just one extra variable this time, but ah, we're not afraid of that. We're not really sure what we're looking for here. Let's see. We want the ratio of b to x. So let's go ahead and write down what we want. We want b over x, but I don't see b over x here. And maybe you can find some clever way to force b over x in there, but well, this is a complicated thing to be looking for, so I'm going to make a substitution. I like to make substitutions that, to simplify things, because otherwise what good is a substitution? I don't like b over x. I like y. Just a simple old y there. What am I going to do with it? Well, I can solve this for b. I can multiply both sides by x, because, well, x isn't going to be 0, because don't divide by 0. We get b is x times y. Now I'm going to put that into this equation. And I'm going to get x squared minus 45. I'm going to square that. I'll get x squared times y squared equals 4x times that. It's going to give me 4x squared times y. x squared, x squared, x squared. x isn't 0, so I can just divide by x squared. And they're all gone. And look what I'm left with. 1 minus 45y squared equals 4y. That's a quadratic. We know how to handle this. We'll bring all the terms over to one side, and then we'll factor. We have 45y squared plus 4y minus 1 equals 0. And we can factor this. We know that the constant terms have to multiply to negative 1. So we'll put a plus 1 here, minus 1 there. And let's see, we want the y terms. They're going to have to multiply out to 45. Obvious choice there, 9 and 5. The difference of those, sure enough, is 4. So we're going to put the 9y right there and the 5y right over here. Plus 9y minus 5y does indeed give us the plus 4y right there. So we have our factorization. So now we can find our roots. This gives us negative 1 fifth. And this over here gives us 1 ninth. And we want the largest possible ratio, 1 ninth. There we are. Substitution for simplification. We like that. Let's try it again. We see this equation right here. We've got a, we're looking for the sum of all real numbers x. So we need to solve this equation for x. But x is hiding away up there in an exponent. So we don't like that because it's hard to isolate something that's hiding up in an exponent. So we know what we'll do. We'll make a substitution. y equals 2 to the x because y is a lot nicer than 2 to the x. Now another tip that we might try this is just looking over here at 4 to the x. 4, 2. They're both powers of 2. So hopefully we can write 4 to the x in terms of y. Sure enough, break out our exponent rules. 4 is 2 squared. And 2 squared raised to the x power gives us 2 to the 2x. Now we can kind of wind that back, make it look a little like this, but this time we'll put the x on the inside. So this is 2 to the x. The whole thing there squared. That's just y. Pretty slick. That's just y squared. So 4 to the x is y squared. Now we put these into our equation. And sure enough, we have a quadratic. Not only do we have a quadratic, it's a pretty easy quadratic. We can factor this. y minus 4 times y minus 2. So that gives us our solutions for y are 4 and 2. So then we just, 4 plus 2 is 6. We put that in the answer, and we are wrong. So you know the drill. Read the question at the end. What is the sum of all real numbers? x. We care about x. So we need to figure out what x is. When y is 4, x is 2. 
when y is 2, x is 1. So let's check and make sure we got this all down. We'll put the 2 back up here. 4 squared is 16 minus 6 times 4. 6 times 4 is 24. So 16 minus 24 is negative 8, plus 8 is 0. We'll try 1 up here. 4 minus 12 plus 8, that's 0 as well. So the sum of all real numbers x that satisfy this equation is 3. And there's our second strategy for tackling these things. That's substitution for simplification.